All right, Coach, this is your first time. We'll hear your thoughts on the deal. Just give me a boilerplate breakdown of what you thought Ryan, how Ryan Poles did. Well, I, 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 I give him an A. Now, I'm, I'm going to – I'm going to hold my A until after the draft, yeah. and we see him in minicamp. But uh, as, as far as the picks, mm -hmm. uh, as, as far as we're talking about DJ Moore, I mean, and next year and the year after, I mean, that's uh, it, it, it's great value. I guess that's how we would look at this thing. But, you know, here's the deal. Okay, we're sitting at nine right now. And, and there's going to be some good players there. I mean, I would be looking at, obviously, offense, defensive line. If, if there's a quality defensive lineman that maybe you don't feel is, is qual should be a ninth pick in the draft, I would not have any reservations of moving down a couple spots. I really wouldn't. I'd move down to 11 and get the guy you want or maybe move up a spot or two and get the guy you want. It wouldn't be that expensive there. So I think they're sitting in a position now. The pressure's off, Ryan Poles. When you've got that first pick in a draft, I mean, yeah, all these offers are coming in, but until you make the deal, you better be ready in the back of your mind to take somebody, right? Okay, all this stuff falls through, and right now, talking to all these GMs around the league, Josh, like we do, you know, there's a real split feeling on these quarterbacks, mm -hmm. you know? There, it's not Trevor Lawrence, him and everybody else. So there's different opinions on, on, on how they got him ranked, and something like that, all of a sudden, everybody says, I'm going to sit back. And now the Bears are sitting there with the first pick in the draft, and you've got to draft somebody. Mm -hmm. So they got out of that situation. That pressure's off. They can sit back, focus in on that ninth pick, and here's the real key. If you get a starter at nine, mm -hmm. let's assume, and we get a starter at 61, let's assume, and D.J. Moore, we know he's a starter, you get three starters this year for that first pick, that's a home run. And they got the number 53 overall pick from the Roquan Smith Rates. So that should be four starters. You talk about defensive linemen who might be in that number nine region. Let's talk about Jalen Carter real yeah. quick. I, want, I wonder if moving down to nine, does that maybe give the Bears a little bit of leeway to take a guy with maturity questions and some maybe some character concerns instead? Because you can't take that guy at one, right? But can you take him at nine? I, I totally agree with you, Josh. I wouldn't take him at one. Uh... But I would take him at nine. <laughs> I would. I really would. I might even jump up to seven to take him if okay. he's there. Yeah. You know, and the Bears, I'm, right now, everybody's doing all the research. And you want to make sure that there's not a history of problems. You want to make sure that everything's clean mm -hmm. here when you draft him. If that all looks good, then I would draft this guy. I mean, I would not have reservation. And you know what? Maybe you're looking. I, I like this kid at Clemson, this Byron Breesey, mm -hmm. right? The big tackle, 6'6", 300 pounds, plays like a madman. Okay, at a high level in Clemson. If, if he's, maybe you say nine's too high, Carter's gone. Hey, go back two spots and take this guy. You know, don't, don't lose any sleep over it, you know. And there's going to be some quality offensive tackles there too, right? Yeah. And what did, that. what did you think about them, the Bears doing the trade now instead of waiting, maybe driving up leverage? Do you think DJ Moore was maybe the key to that? Like, hey, if he's on the table, we'll just take it now. Everybody's hearing the same thing and seeing the same thing. There are not veteran wide receivers, young veteran wide receivers under contract that are available. I mean, so the Bears would have been into to taking a chance on a 30-plus wide receiver and hope that he stays healthy and, you know, hope he makes a transition. I mean, this, this is perfect for them. This is really following that blueprint a little bit of Philadelphia Eagles, right? right? And, and they turned out to be obviously successful. Also important to mention, the Bears now own the Panthers' first-round pick. They're going to be starting a rookie quarterback, and what did Ryan Poles do? He took that elite weapon, so now they're going to struggle a little bit more. Absolutely. Go, so. All right, knowing what we know today and assuming that Aaron Rodgers is traded, oh. Coach, where do you see the Bears stacking up in the NFC North? I think, we can, I think it's safe to say Aaron Rodgers is, is not long for Green Bay. It's just, is he a Jet or does he retire? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think is a Jet, you know, I don't know what he's doing. I, I, I can't <laughs> even, I thought he was going to stay at Green Bay, but he's got, he's got everybody confused, including himself, I think. But uh, you know what, in, in, the, in the division right now, when you look at that, uh, I got to say Minnesota is the team to beat. You know, the Vikings are the team to beat. They're a veteran team with a veteran quarterback. They've won. New coaches kind of created new energy in there last year when he came in. Uh, I know a lot of people are talking about Detroit. I got to see it two years in a row. So real quick, without Aaron Rodgers, boy, that is a major leap, not just for the Bears, but for everybody in that division. You know, so it's, it's basically wide open. Yeah, you mentioned the Vikings, but what about a team like the Lions? I'm going to throw a weird hypothetical at you. This yeah. is a team that's rebuilt the right way. 
Lamar Jackson is is a, is basically up for bid, right? If you're the Lions, do you go offer him a contract and give up the two first-round picks and kind of cement your rebuild and take over? No. No? No, I don't because I, I think the style of offense that they want to run okay. uh, and the way Jared Goff played for the Lions right now, I think they've got the perfect fit. I think he's happy. I mean, he was a first-round pick for a reason. Right. It didn't work out at, at the Rams, but he, he does have talent. And as long as they keep that same offensive package, I mean, Jared, Jared Goff, I mean, it's, gonna, it's no different than what Minnesota's doing, right. you know, with Kirk Cousins. Play, play action, run the ball. It's probably no different than what we're going to do. Play action, run the ball, and throw it. Jared Goff proves he can do that. I mean, the Lions are good. I just got to see them do it two years in a row. All right, Coach, before we go, let's recap the day, and I want to get your thoughts. The best move that was made today. Best move, I, I would say signing uh, – I'm going to go with Tremaine Edwards. I mean, because the guy can play any position. He's a playmaker. He's an athlete. Uh, he's an every-down linebacker. You can't say that about a lot of guys. And he's, what, 20? How old is he, 24? 24. That's hard to believe. 24 years old, you played four years in the league. I'm going to go with Edmonds. All right, one more question about the Packers. Assuming Rodgers leaves, they have Jordan Love. If you're, if you're Green Bay, do you try and bottom out for one year and get an elite player next year's draft to build, help build around Jordan Love? Is it kind of time to reset that clock? Yeah, it, it probably is. It, it, it honestly probably is. Uh, give, Jordan, give Jordan Love a year to play. Uh, you know, you got a young team as it is. Uh, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to have to, you're not going to give, you know, you're not going to get much for Aaron Rodgers, right? The longer this thing went on, the less teams are saying, well, we, we're bidding against ourselves. You know, they're not going to get the multiple number one picks. And no one's going to pick up half of Aaron Rodgers' salary. I mean, Green Bay's going to get stuck on this deal, I got a feeling. So I think it's probably time to take a step back, like you said, and, and start rebuilding for the future. All right, 2023 is all about building around Justin Fields and, and removing those excuses. Have the Bears started to do enough? Is Nate Davis enough? What uh, DJ Moore enough? Is that enough? Yeah, yeah, DJ Moore is. And, and having the extra picks, uh, let's see who they draft. Uh, I'd love to see him draft a good young tackle if we don't sign one. Right, you know, either with that ninth or sixty-first pick. Uh, so yes, they, 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 they. It's a good start. It's a, it's a good start, and uh, you know, n- now all of a sudden, you know, we'll see how they, they, they kind of tighten up the offense a little bit to take advantage of the players they get.